Today we're gonna make a kind of practice about lesson three of chapter 18. We're still talking about the space and studying space and so on. So just uh, we finished uh, this chapter, but we didn't make kind of practice of lesson three. So today we're gonna just make this kind of practice. So we're gonna answer these questions together. If you know the answer, just raise your hand, okay? So first question here, he said that, how did Hubble tell that galaxies are moving apart from each other, okay? How did Hubble know these, okay, guys? Okay, that's how our galaxies move apart from each other. So, who can answer this, guys? Uh, just two is Adam. By red, by red shift. By red shift, of course, okay. So here, guys, let's remember what is the red shift and the blue shift. Anyone have an idea to explain this to us, guys? What is the red shift or the blue shift? Okay. Yes, Farah Mahlab. Can you explain? When the galaxy. Yes. Yes. Uh, when the galaxies are um, moving, they uh, like away from us. They make a red color. Hmm. Uh, uh, but when the uh, when the galaxies are moving towards us, they may uh, they appear blue. So somehow it's good, okay. So thank you for for your okay trial, okay. But just guys, this idea of redshift of blue shift that depends on something or it's, uh, a phenomenon we call the Doppler effect. So what is the Doppler effect? Actually, do you know this? The Doppler effect does not happen only to the sound waves; also it happens to the light waves. So what is Doppler effect? We said Doppler effect is the apparent change in the frequency of a wave. For example, if there is a car passing by you, so you are, and this uh, car is producing sound by its horn, so you are gonna uh, listen the horn stop like. Mm -hmm. So it feels that the uh, the sound starts or the sound pitch, the frequency changes, but actually it never change because it's the same horn, okay? But due to change of distance between you and the source of the sound which is the horn of the car, it appear or there is a fake change in the sound frequency. We call this the Doppler effect. Scientists observe that also that the same could happen to the light, okay? Light also sometimes we have a, a fake change in its frequency due to change of position or change of distance between the light source and the observer. So once the galaxies, they are move apart from each other, okay, that's make the waves have longer wavelengths that mean less frequency, so they turn to that red color more than the blue one because we know that the spectrum colors start by red and with violet, okay? So they are moving in that range. So once they move toward the bright part, or that means the waves frequencies tend to be closer to the red lines, okay? It means they are moving farther from each other. While once they, okay, turn to the blue line, that means they are moving closer to each other. So we could figure it out that galaxies are moving apart from each other by the redshift, and they could be, we could figure that the galaxy is moving toward each other by the blue shift. Is it clear here? Yes, Sam, you asked something? No, I'm still a gay opus. Okay, so is it clear? The first one, is it clear? We know what now the difference between the redshift and the blue shift, guys? Clear, guys, or not? Clear, Mr. Clear. Okay. Yes. So just answer me, just okay. Let's pass to question number two. Question number two, he asks here, uh, what evidence shows that the universe is expanding? Okay. Yes, Ritesh. B moving apart. B, yes, because galaxies are already moving apart, so that's approved. They are okay. The uh, the universe expand. So question number three, what is constellation? So let's remember here, is the Plina? C. Yes, of course, it's, oh yeah, star pattern, okay. So here, three, is it, is it a star pattern or a region of the sky? What do you think? Constellation, okay. star pattern, don't hesitate, your answer is true. Okay. 
Okay. Okay, Katrina. So here, then we've passed to the next. Uh, what is the measure? Uh, no, Mister, Miss Region of the Sky. A region of Sky. What is the translation? A region of Sky. No, actually, a translation. It's a star pattern, which which we could using to map. Okay, the sky. So later we call the region with the same. Okay, or the uh, name of the constellation. You got idea? شهنا بنقول constellations are um, um, sections in sky that contain star patterns. Yep. But they okay. star pattern. Yep. Actually, we said that the constellations. Okay, we said they are star patterns, or we said that once there are some uh, stars, they form a certain pattern. Like for example, we said that areas the god of war or uh, Latin and the one the drum in Japanese. Do you remember these examples? These are constellations. Later, we just named the region which contain this pattern by uh, the name of the constellation. So when we said that what is constellation, we can say region of sky or star pattern post considered to be true. But okay, so I'm gonna just select these two. Okay, so if you just say star pattern or region of sky, both are true, no problem, okay? Is it clear? Yes. Okay. So let's pass to the next question number four. What is the imaginary sphere uh, created by scientists to, uh, that's around the Earth? What we call this? Is Hannah Hany? The celestial sphere. Yes, yeah, celestial so sphere, of course. Okay, good. Then question number five. How did Hubble tell the universe while expanding? Just answer this question before, so one more time. Uh, yes, Laura? Eh? Yep, okay. So, galaxies are moving away from each other. Then question number six. Which of the following indicates the universe ex is expanding? Okay. So, yes, Sema? Sema? Okay. Yes, Mr. Yes. Yes, question number six, Sama. No problem. Okay. Mr. Hatab D. Yes, observation of the redshift, which means that galaxies are moving yes. away from each other. Mashi, Mr. Bassa, I didn't hear you. Yeah, Hello. that's because of the internet connection. Don't worry, okay? Mr. did you call me? Yes, because of the internet connection, there is a, I think that someone cannot hear me, so I just ask you to answer the question. So let's answer the question number seven, okay? What is the imaginary point direction above the observer head? B. It would be B, that's Dinef, okay? Okay, so that's question. So well, let's pass to question eight. Uh, okay, circumpolar stars can be seen all night along during the entire year because they are. Who can answer this one? Yes, uh, Adham. Yes, Mr. Question eight, Adam. Why okay, always we are able to see the circumpolar star, okay? B, B because yeah. they're above Earth's. Yes, ex exactly, okay, above the Earth's axis, okay? So that means it's exactly above the North Pole. So that's why also it would be seen, okay? Because even while the Earth is rotates, okay, the axis point doesn't change, okay? So like this, we can see the same star all the time. So the vernal equinox, okay, is used to establish stars. We use it to establish stars, what? Is it to determine? Yes, Laura? D. Yeah, D, right, ascension, good. Okay, so here, let's start to match these terms, okay, to these uh, definitions. So question number 10, the sun's location on the first day of spring, what we call this? Who can answer this question, guys? Please just raise your hand, others, wake up. Is the plena? E. Uh, that's E, good. Okay, then question 11. Uta, what about question 11?
Puta, can you hear me? Okay, Ritaj. F. F, good. Celestial sphere. Question 12. The distance that light travels in one year, what we call this. Okay, yes, Hana Yasser. Light year. Light year, good. Okay, so let's see. Question 13. The line where the earth is and the sky appears to meet, what we call this. Yes, Hana Hani. Horizon. Horizon, good. B. Then question 14. The angle between an object and the sky, and the, sorry, object in the sky and the horizon, what we call this? Yes, uh, Farah. Farah Mahlab. A. A, altitude, good. And the last one here, we ask about uh, the imaginary point in the sky directly above the observer, okay, on the earth. So what we call this? Yes, Zena. D. D, Zena, good. Okay, sorry. Here. So let's try to answer this for this short questions, okay? Uh, let's hear here. What is a, a celestial sphere? Who can answer this question, guys? What is the celestial sphere? We just answered this question more than one time. So who can answer me? Hmm. Okay, Hannah Hani. It is an imaginary circle created by uh, extending uh, Earth's equator into space. Good, okay. So we said that it is an imaginary circle extending from the Earth's equator into space. That's very good, okay. So then pass to the next question. What is the celestial sphere? Uh, why is the celestial sphere a better way to indicate the position of the star than, uh, than using altitude? That means it's better to use the celestial sphere than using the Aristotle, okay. So why? Let's make it burr here, guys. Okay. So, who can tell me? Yes, uh, Adam. Uh, yes, please. Yes, could you answer the question, please? Question 17. Okay, one second. Okay, Sema, could you answer, please? Yes, Mr. Yeah. Uh, because the altitude uh, depends on the location, on yes. the location, but the celestial sphere uh, uses the Earth as a reference. Good, here. We said that using altitude or just using the result to mention, okay, the altitude of a star in a space, it's regarding to the observer position. And of course, the observer position could it change. So it's not an accurate location. That means once we describe for someone the location of a star uh, by its altitude, that will, of course, differ from certain position to another. So the one here in Egypt different than the one in the America or in different area on the Earth. So it's not that accurate. But once using the celestial sphere, the celestial sphere describes the position of the star in the sky regarding to the entire Earth. So whatever okay, you are, you are going to know where is the exact location of that star. Good, Sama. Then pass to the next question here, okay, question 18. So uh, how is the light affected by Doppler effect? How light is affected by Doppler effect? Anyone can tell me? We just explain it, okay, you're in the beginning of the session. So, anyone can tell me? Yes, Farah? Or Mohammed Yasser, okay? Because you didn't answer before. Uh, okay. Okay. Um, because the uh, double effect um, uses wavelengths to get higher frequencies. Yep. Um, and it uses a blue shift. Okay, um, that's that they are my, uh, that they the source that they are moving toward any wave uh, they think. So somehow it's good. Okay, so we see the here just as a sound. Okay, 
increase or decrease and this okay depends on the direction of the moving that means the change in the frequency as we said regarding to the position or the direction of the movement so when they are moving from away from each other they are going to produce more okay red color and once they move toward each other they will be more bluer so we said that the red shift and the uh, blue shift you can say it in any words okay by any way but giving the same idea so it's true okay guys so here we said that the celestial sphere is divided into two 24 hour, uh, equal uh, north-south lines called okay, our line. How many degrees does the space between the two uh, uh, distance hour lines represent? Okay, so hint a sphere is 36 degree. So I think it's easy, yes? So anyone can answer this? Yes, Mr. Yes, Emma. Uh, 360 divide 24. 360 divide 15. 24 equal 15. Good, okay. 15. So, yes, here we said that 360. That's divide, okay. 324, that equal 15, okay. So that means just the distance between each two lines, okay, represent the 15 degree. So, good here, guys. Then let's pass to the last question here. He said that. Use the picture plot to the following question. Okay, explain what would happen to the altitude of the North Star and the Star B as the night uh, as the night uh, progress. Okay, that means as the night keep happening. Okay, so what would would you find? Okay, here what would happen to the position of North Star and the Star A? Okay, and that's the direction of the movement of the stars. Okay, guys, that means all the stars are moving in that direction. So what would happen? Okay, so only seven. Here, that the North Star, there is something special about North Star that different than the others. We just explained, we said the North Star is actually is located mm -hmm. above the North Pole. So that means no change, always you're going to observe the same, but here... It's B, really meaning the same altitude. Yes, but B will... But B will reach its, uh, its uh, zenith. Yeah, so here we said that, like this, okay, we are going to find that... North Pole would never change because its position is fixed as it's above the North Pole. So whatever the, you are rotating, you are always going to see the same. But here, because you are rotating like this, okay, so that means this one, okay, will keep moving like that. So you're going to find B will change its position and it will keep moving until it reaches the zenith. zenith that means the point which is directly above, okay, the uh, observer. You get the idea, guys? Is it clear, guys? Yes, Mister. Yes. So please, guys, study this lesson very well. Okay, we must supposed to study the entire chapter because you are gonna have a quiz, as we said, once you turn from the uh, aid vacation. So do your best, study your lessons very well from your textbook, and if you have any question or something's not clear, I'm waiting for your questions all the time. Thank you, guys, and goodbye. Do you have any question before we end our meeting? Thank you, Mister. Thank you, guys.